Josh Kulibau back in action. Not too far away now, only, what, 24, 25 days in Perth, back at home. I mean, how does that feel, being in the UFC and fighting at home for the first time? Yeah, man, it's, it's, a, it's a dream come true. I've always wanted to, to, to fight in front of my friends and family for the UFC on the, on the world's biggest stage. So, yeah, it's unreal. It's a, it's a dream come true. You'll be fighting Malsik Bagdasarian at uh, UFC 284. It's a, a really fun fight on paper. Two guys who can stand and bang. Uh, is, is that sort of yeah. what, what you thought when you saw the name come across the table? Guy with a, a big kickboxing background? Um, I, I just, um, I just like guys that are, that are going to go there and, and try and fight me. I feel it always brings the best out of me. I feel like I always get the best performance out of myself. And those guys, they, they really do motivate me to, to train and level up because I know obviously how dangerous they are and, and, and how, you know, if I, if I'm caught, if I'm caught slipping, how much, how much the repercussions are. So yeah, it's a real, uh, real motivation to, to train for these guys and that they force me to level up and it's it, it's exciting for, for myself to test myself against someone like that and also to um yeah to, 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 to push myself they, they, these guys motivate me to push myself so yeah guys like him like the guys that have come to fight they're, 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 they're the guys that i want to they're the guys that i want to fight. yeah i guess that's something that uh myself not being a fighter really ever thinks about like when, when you get your opponent, when you look at how they fight, like how that sort of influences your approach to the game. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like, obviously, like when you're fighting someone that has a, a specific style, you, 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 you have to sort of train that way where like, if you know, a guy that's coming in there and it's, you know, he's going to come, come for your head. It's sort of like, I don't know, it brings out something primal in yourself. Yeah, I, that's why I like that feeling of, of knowing that I'm fighting someone that's you know coming to take my head off. Still undefeated as a as a featherweight, uh, I still feel like people are sleeping on you. Do you get that feeling as well? Do you care about about all that? Nah, I don't care too much. I don't care too much. Uh, again, like the, the 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 basic casual fans, they just see fights and they don't really care. They see records. They don't really care. Um, they don't they don't they don't really know too much about like what's going on like the the little the little intricate things are part of fighting that people like the fight only really the diehard fans or the, the the fighters see it in someone and yeah like i don't really care too much about the fans whether they whether they you know if i'm underrated overrated you know hyped up doesn't matter to me pretty impressive uh fight last time out i know that only got given to you as a split for I don't know, whatever reason, <laughs> but uh, that was a little while ago. Were you hoping to get back in action a little bit sooner than now? I was, I was planning to, um, I was planning to fight in, uh, in Paris. I was trying to get on the same card with uh, Robert Whittaker and um, Bam Bam. <clears throat> uh, I feel like a lot of the Aussies were trying to get on that Paris card just because the two guys were already on it and it's like, might as well make it an Aussie card, try and make it like an Aussie card by getting all the Aussies on there. Uh, but I didn't get to go ahead because I actually hurt my hand um, leading in uh, after the fight. Sorry, after after the Sung Woo Choi fight, I actually hurt my hand. So, yeah, I couldn't get back into training. And then I said, all right, sweet, let's try and push again for uh, MSG because all the uh, CKB boys were on the MSG card. I was like, you know, might as well try and get on that card. It's a big card. He's, he's headlining, you know, so I was like, yeah, let's try and get on that. And then that didn't go through. And then it was like, sort of like, all right, will you fight in December? But if you fight in December, you do know we're coming to Australia in February. So if you fight in December, we'd probably be hard for you to get on that February card. So I was like, I miss out fighting in December, but at least I know for a fact, I'll be on the uh, uh, 100% sure I'll be on the Australian card. So I was like, yeah, I'll just wait it out. Because again, like it's a dream come true. Do you feel like there were a few of the Aussie boys sort of in that similar position, probably due to fight maybe November, December, but with the the Aussie card coming up, they're kind of like, well, maybe, maybe let's just wait. Or on the other hand, they took fights yeah. and now they're not going to be able to fight an Aussie. Exactly. Like look at, look at uh Bam Bam who just fought, you know what I mean? Look at uh Jake Matthews who just fought. They're both not on the, not on the card, you know? So 
yeah, that, I feel like that, that them two guys were were on the same boat as me. That like, oh, do I get a paycheck in before Christmas and sort of like you know try and hope I can get a fight or you know? So it was it was more so like that that sort of thinking. I feel. How was the the Christmas period? Were you able to sort of enjoy yourself, or was it a little bit restrictive? <laughs> Nah, it was very restrictive. It was, it was to, to me. It was like, yeah, I couldn't go out, eat, couldn't go out drinking. You know, it was it was good to just spend some time with my friends and family and stuff. But then again, I wasn't I wasn't able to fully enjoy the experience because obviously I couldn't eat and I couldn't. And I am Filipino, you know, I love to eat, so <laughs> and I love to drink too. So yeah, uh, I couldn't do any of that stuff. Uh, but you know, there's always going to be time for that stuff after fights, and you know, there's always going to be time for that later. So right now, there's a there's a guy I need to focus on a job at hand. So that's all I'm focusing on. When you look at Mouse like Bagdasarian, what does he do good that you've seen? Man, he's good. He's explosive. <laughs> he hits hard. You know, he's he's a guy that a lot of people would look at him and be like, oh, well, I don't want to be standing across the cage with that guy. But to me, that's a uh, that that puts uh, you know lights a fire under my ass and and really, really, really gets me excited. Really gets me really gets me going you know what i mean uh i think he's good everywhere i think he's uh his kickboxing is is really really not not the most technical or most refined kickboxing style i've seen but he's he's definitely he can crack and he has the confidence to let the let the punches and kicks go so um that's what's dangerous about it. he hits hard and he's confident that he knows he hits hard so he's he can let it go so he's 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 a he's a pretty he's a pretty pretty exciting fight if i was to be a fan i'd be excited to see this fight too you mentioned all his striking i, I feel like you know you being a, a purple belt in bjj that might be an avenue that you look into have you thought about that like are we going to see any of your your grappling come into <laughs> things i suppose you can't really know, tell maybe, us any maybe, plans right uh, maybe maybe uh, it depends the Aussie fans they, they get me deed up enough i, I think i'll just not think with my head and just think with the crowd, you know, the crowd D me up too much. And I just, you know, me and him can go, you know, toe to toe and, and bang it out and just let me have one of them, let me bang bro moments. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, uh, I'll try, I'll try, I'll try and stick to a game plan, if, you know, but yeah, it depends on the, in the, in the heat of the moment, maybe he gets me a little bit too excited. I mean, him just go toe to toe. So who knows? <laughs> How is it for you as a competitor to kind of dealing with the energy of the crowd or I guess embracing the energy of the crowd like that? It's going to be different because like I fought at the apex and I really enjoyed fighting in the apex where there was like no crowd and it was just my coaches and I could hear my opponent's coaches. And and then I fought on fight island as well. And it, again, it's very similar. It's like I could only hear my coaches, could hear their coaches, could even hear the commentators as well, like in some parts. But with a crowd, like in Singapore, and like that was, it did feel like an Aussie crowd. It was like, it did feel like there was quite a bit of Aussies there. But yeah, like it's not, it, it's not going to compare to what's going to happen in Perth. It's going to literally be like deafening in there. So I'm going to try my best to, to, to stick to a game plan, keep a cool head. But then again, I'm going to be, you know, trying to embrace it in and, and, and obviously and entertain, the, entertain the crowd and, and put a show on, but also, you know, walk away, try to walk away unscathed and, and you know, with my hand raised. So. Yeah, well, styles make fights and anyone who's watched either of you guys fight uh, should be excited about this one. And it's just lastly, you've been in the UFC for a couple years now. Uh, basically, pandemic time was when you got into the UFC. Uh, obviously, yeah. um, people might not remember, but UFC Auckland for up away against Jalen Turner. What have you learned since yeah. then? Um, the, the the biggest thing I've learned is that when I got into UFC, I thought it was going to be all, you know, um, sunshine and rainbows is what I thought it would be like. But it was, it, it's the same. At the end of the day, it is just a fight. And that's what I'm good at. And, it's it's yes there's more there's more eyes watching you and yes there's more media and yes there's a, a bright light in your face but other than that at the end of the day it is still fighting 
it is nothing different than what I did on the outs, like before I got into the UFC. And yeah, like it, it, at the end of the day, it, it's it's still fighting. Like you, you have to be good at fighting to get into the UFC. It's not like you just get to the UFC and then it's all, yeah, like, oh, where's my fame? Where's my money? Where's my, it's not like that. So the, the biggest thing for me is that it, it, it's it's just the same. It's just uh, brighter lights and more people watching you. And that's, that's about it. Sweet, man. Well, uh, hopefully you go out and uh, do the business uh, in February. Not too far away now, February 13th, I think it is. I always get confused with the Australia and New Zealand dates. Anyway, good luck out there and uh, enjoy the moment. Awesome. Thank you, Chris.